Hello, and welcome to new semester planning session brought to you by the Academic Resource Center at Georgetown University. Today, we're going to be going over the essential steps that you should go through when starting a brand new semester and a few key questions that you should keep in mind. With any new semester, a good starting point is to understand the rhythm of the semester. Now, what do I mean by that? You may have noticed as a student that there tends to be a phenomenon where all of your assignments are due the same week. Your professors tend to have multiple papers and tests scheduled for around similar deadlines. That is, of course, because every class of syllabus is based off of how breaks impact the academic calendar. When your professors are assigning your major tests and papers, they're doing so based off of when you'll be away from campus, when those breaks are falling. And that's why we tend to have periods with heavy assignment deadlines versus lighter assignment deadlines. So if you can begin by understanding the academic calendar of a specific semester, then you're already going to be approaching the semester with a leg up in terms of knowing how to approach it. Let's start by looking at how a typical spring semester might break down with different breaks. Right now, we're in the start of the semester period. That means mid-January to early February. Then the second segment is before spring break for a school like Georgetown that will be early February until March because typically spring break falls at the very beginning of March. Georgetown also has an Easter break. So a lot of deadlines will then fall in that period between spring break to Easter break. And then the final period is that Easter to end of semester, April through mid-May. Knowing that these are the segments, we can already plug in what the main theme and attitude of each of these blocks will be. Our start of the semester, where we are right now, this is our pre-midterm season. This is when your courses are focusing on fundamentals, and there's a greater focus on readings and day-to-day -day homework. This is the easiest part of the whole semester, and it's often when your motivation is the highest because you're dealing with the general ideas without feeling the pressure of greater assignments. That before spring break period, so with Georgetown's schedule in early February, we're going to switch to midterm season one. This will be when your first set of major tests and paper deadlines will occur. And typically for the spring semester, this will end right before spring break. Then in that spring break to Easter break section of the semester, that will be the second midterm season. With spring break, we tend to see a lot of deadlines ending just before it. With Easter break, depending on when Easter falls, you may have deadlines right before that break or right after it. But typically, this will be the second midterm season. And then you'll have that final exam period, which is when culminating assignments and major deadlines will be due, and that will be April through mid-May. So just by knowing when breaks fall, we also know when the ebbs and flows of assignment deadlines will be as well. Knowing that the semester can be broken up into these four significant blocks, you want to, at the beginning of the semester, work on knowing your goals for each block. So the first set of goals to focus on are your assignment deadlines. Make sure you're looking at your syllabi and knowing when your major deadlines fall and how close to one another they are. Just having a sense of when your periods of heavy work begin and end will help you plan for the semester as a whole better. 
related to that, don't just know when these assignments are due, but know when you plan on starting on these major assignment deadlines. Often we're focused on turning something in and a better way to approach it is to know when you're going to begin working on an assignment. Especially knowing that your first big midterm session will probably begin in the beginning of February, have a date on your calendar when you are going to start working on those assignments. With that in mind, you should also be using this time to pick out and develop a system for reminding yourself about these deadlines. Taking a look at the beginning of the semester at deadlines later on will certainly be helpful, but in a few weeks, you're going to be stressed, you're going to be preoccupied, and you won't necessarily remember all of these deadlines. So how can you remind yourself in the future about these future deadlines? Are you adding reminders to your Google Calendar? Are you adding reminders to your Apple computer? Do you have a planner that you can write this in? Making sure you write down not only those deadlines, but those reminders to start working on an assignment is going to help you stay on track throughout the semester. And you also want to be aware of what other responsibilities and other goals you have throughout each block. You want to name what other priorities you have now when you have time to think about it, even if it feels like it's something that's not pressing. That's because later on in the semester, you're going to be too tired and too overwhelmed to focus on developing those goals. Figuring out these fundamentals for the semester is all incredibly key in avoiding the burnout cycle, which is something that occurs for a lot of students often in between that first midterm and that second midterm period. How does the burnout cycle take place? It starts occurring when you have one major deadline that you focus all of your energy on. That means that you have a paper due. So you, it's a 10 page paper. You need to get it turned in on time. It's worth so much of your grade. And in order to make that happen, you focus all energy on that. And in doing so, you ignore all of your personal needs and all of other assignments. So you're not sleeping, you aren't eating properly, you aren't doing regular homework, and you also aren't doing another paper that's also due the same week. When you do that, when you're pulling all-nighters, putting all of your energy in one assignment, when you do turn that assignment in, you've made yourself so exhausted because of ignoring other needs, that then you're too depleted to work on anything else. So then you have several days where you're unable to multitask or work ahead. So you put all of your energy into one assignment and then spend a few days doing nothing. So ultimately, this leads you to focus all of your energy on the next major deadline when that pops up. So you have a paper turned in, you turn it in on Friday, then you're exhausted, you sleep all weekend, and then Monday you remember you have a paper due Tuesday, so you repeat this entire cycle. You focus all of your energy on that, then you ignore your personal needs, and then you're exhausted. With this cycle, once you enter into it, it can be difficult to disengage from it, and it also means that you're only making it through the first set of midterms before you get super tired and then everything becomes more difficult. The goal is to plan at the beginning of the semester in order to avoid this cycle. So how do we avoid burnout? 
Most important is to be aware of when deadlines overlap and plan accordingly. That's why it's so important to take the time now to look through all of your syllabi and write down major assignment deadlines so that you know when those weeks occur that you might have multiple tests or multiple papers. When those periods do occur, avoid focusing on one task at a time. And this can be difficult because we often work better when we can just throw all of our mental energy into one set of ideas. But in order to make progress in all of our courses, we need to be able to work towards multiple goals concurrently. With this in mind, you want to start on major assignments well before you think you need to, because when you're starting early, that doesn't necessarily mean you're doing significant work early on. You're not finishing assignments early on, but beginning it will keep you from having to drop everything else just to complete an assignment. Starting these major assignments early is a difficult process. So part of managing that is creating a weekly schedule that helps you plan ahead. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Planning your week. A really helpful way to begin the semester is to create a weekly routine early on that can sustain your needs when work picks up. Right now, you're probably returning to the semester after some time away. You're spending a lot of time going out with friends, developing social connections, and that's important too. And you should do that while you have the time. But it's also important to look in your schedule now to see how some of those social blocks can turn into work blocks later in the semester. Some questions to ask yourself when you're working on planning out a weekly schedule. First is, when will I focus on homework? During your first few weeks of class, assess what kinds of assignments you have due each day. So that means consider recurring written assignments, such as papers and discussion posts, as well as readings and problem sets. Begin planning your weekly schedule by assessing when you actually work on each assignment and intending for that to continue throughout the semester. For example, if you're deadline oriented and typically work on each assignment the night before, plan on that pattern continuing throughout the semester. Basically, the tip here is to plan on working on homework assignments when you are doing the homework assignments. And maybe this sounds so obvious, it's not worth saying out loud. But the truth is that often when we're planning schedules, we're being idealistic instead of realistic. We tell ourselves, I can get this assignment done a week early, when the reality is that mentally we don't have the motivation to do it until the night before. So then we waste time trying to do it early when that's not when we get it done. So knowing how you work and being realistic about when you will complete weekly assignments is going to help set you up for success. Once you've figured out when you are focusing on completing homework assignments, you want to determine when you will focus on long-term assignments. This means when are you looking ahead to begin working on papers, studying for tests, presentations, similar assignments. You want to identify blocks of time when you aren't preoccupied by regular homework assignments. And you want to select a time when you won't prioritize anything else over starting a long-term assignment. I mentioned before, plan on writing a weekly discussion post when you're motivated to do it, because let's say you have a discussion post to do on a Wednesday, and Tuesday night you plan on starting a paper that's due in three weeks. If you haven't done that discussion post, you're going to ignore that paper and work on the discussion post. So if you wanna work on a paper that's due in three weeks, the best thing to do is find a time when there's no other time sensitive deadline that you can prioritize. Ideally, this might be something like a Friday afternoon or a Saturday morning, 
a block of time when you don't even want to work, if you can start working on a long-term assignment during that time, it may be the only time that you're going to realistically prioritize it over something with a sooner deadline. What's important to name in focusing on long-term assignments is that you want to begin by making your goals smaller and more realistic to ensure that you actually complete them. If you're sitting down on a Saturday morning to work on a paper that's due in three weeks, your goal shouldn't be to write the entire paper. Instead, just make your goal reading over the assignment, brainstorming, maybe setting up an appointment with the writing center or figuring out your next steps. A small realistic goal is more likely to be completed than an unrealistic large goal. And you also want to make sure you start a study session by working towards your long-term goals instead of leaving them for the end of a study session. Often what happens with projects with deadlines that are far off is that we say we'll work on it after we've finished the homework that's due tomorrow, but we're often too tired to look ahead after we've done another assignment. So it's better to start working on long-term assignments first for a smaller period of time, even if it's 20, 30 minutes, and then leave the time-sensitive assignment for second because you know you're going to work on that either way. It's also important when planning out your week to figure out when you will focus on personal needs each week. Know what you need physically, mentally, and emotionally in order to maintain energy throughout the semester. We are humans. We are not machines. So we need to prioritize a minimum amount of sleep, nutrition, sometimes exercise. So noting what those minimums are and making those non-negotiables might make it harder to complete an assignment in the short term, but it will make it easier to go throughout the whole semester in the long term. So determine what those minimum needs are now and don't compromise when it comes to them. Also be aware of how you are in engaging with social activities and what you're going to prioritize no matter what. Sometimes we again, have noble intentions and say, I'm going to skip these social activities in order to do work. But naturally, what we want to do is be social. And that's part of your experience at Georgetown as well. So then we engage in social activities, even though we haven't planned to do so. Again, it's best to be realistic with your plan and be honest with yourself about what social activities you are going to prioritize and work that into your weekly schedule. The beginning of the academic semester is also when you should be assessing other non-academic goals that you have for the semester. This might be something such as a capstone project. It could be a study abroad application. I think for spring semester, it might most commonly be a summer internship application or a job application. And you want to use the beginning of the semester to work on your semester long plan for that project. You might not need to focus on that now in fact, it might be impossible to focus on some of these now, but if you can develop a plan now at the beginning of the semester, that will help you be able to activate that plan later in the semester when you won't have the energy to work on that planning piece. With all of these tasks we've been talking about, it's important to note that the first steps are the most difficult. Starting anything is the most difficult part, whether it's starting a long-term assignment, a semester-long goal, or a normal homework assignment. So when looking at all of your goals, 
and assignments for the semester, identify the tasks that you are least likely to begin early. That might be a paper you're procrastinating on. It might be the job application process. And then choose a small and approachable step to begin working towards that larger goal. Let's say that your goal is working on job applications. The first step might be to set up a meeting with the Career Center, or it might be to update your LinkedIn, or it might even be to create your to-do list for the semester. What you want to do though is create a goal that's so tiny that it can actually be approached and it won't be something that you ignore. Schedule a time block to start that task. And something that's important with this time block is you want to schedule a time to begin it, not to complete it. Often we find it hard to work on things that aren't due immediately because we are focused on the end product when you need to just activate the process because once you've activated it, you're in it and that makes it easier to keep working on it step by step. And I mentioned this before, but you wanna begin your first steps now, even if they're not pressing because now is when you have the energy to support them because your school assignments haven't picked up yet. When beginning tasks, do your best to avoid perfectionism. We're often overly ambitious and we want to do more in one time block than we're physically or mentally able to. What this often looks like is that if we can't complete a task, we don't even approach it at all. So if you can approach these long-term blocks by working on small steady steps instead of big significant chunks, then you're more likely to make progress on them. So we have here your to-do list for what you should be working on at the beginning of the semester, essentially your new semester planning to-do list. First is to know your busy periods for the semester. That means write down all of your major deadlines, look through your Canvas pages, look through your syllabi, and write them all down either in a calendar or a planner. After that, develop a weekly plan to approach assignments. Choose the blocks when you're working on specific homework assignments, and then also choose the one or two blocks when you can work on those long-term semester projects. Know what you need to avoid burnout and be firm with this. Write out your minimum required health and social goals. And I recommend writing this out because it's easy to tell ourselves in our minds, yes, I know I need sleep and that's important. But if you write it out, you may be more firm with yourself. It could even be helpful to write out six hour minimum sleep on a post-it note and put it on your alarm clock. And then begin working towards semester long deadlines now. Start early, but start small. The purpose of starting early is to activate the process because again, beginning is difficult. So for, again, using the example of applying for jobs, if you're able to get in a process of submitting job applications now, it will be easier to submit a job application that's perfect for a role that's perfect for you in March if you already have your cover letter and resume ready to go. Set up the systems now so that you don't have to develop them later. That's a good segue into letting you know about our next webinar, which is on Thursday, January 25th, semester long project man management. We're gonna be going over how to work on some of these semester long goals that can require more planning.
If you have any questions, feel free to add them to the chat. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today and good luck with the new semester. So I'm looking at the question in the chat in terms of having advice to participate fully in in-class discussions and lots of class assignments. I have a few tips in particular. First, and I'll say them out loud and also write them in the chat. First is to visit your professor's office hours to discuss these concerns and ask your professors for advice. Because your professors, some may not be understanding, but some may have really good recommendations for how to process this um, and discuss your concerns. So that's the first one. When it comes to class discussion, something I would really recommend for all students is to, when you're doing the homework the night before, write down a question or a comment that you want to make in class and then you will go into class with something ready to say. Sometimes if you have trouble participating in class discussion, the best way to do that is to get in before the discussion has started. And a good way to do that is to prepare that question ahead of time. So I'll type this out. Often with class discussion, we think we need to say something that's a statement and prove how smart we are, but asking a question is perfectly valid. And then the third uh, piece of advice I would have is make use of the Writing Center. This is a great resource for having someone help you look over paper assignments. So if you haven't used the Writing Center before, um, they are a student-run organization where they can help you help provide feedback uh, on your papers. So they often, they're not there to write your papers for you, but often if you're having trouble starting a long-term assignment, what you can do is set up an appointment with them so that you have kind of an external accountability to help you stay on track. So those are a few thoughts that I have on that particular question. Okay, thank you again and have a great afternoon.